I am Abhijit Vikram, Head of Investor Relations. On behalf of India Mart Intermesh Limited, I welcome you all to the company's quarter 4 and FY 2024 earnings webinar. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Joining us today from the management team we have Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Vijesh Agarwal, Full Time Director, and Mr. Prati Chandra, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward looking in nature and may involve risk and uncertainties. Kindly refer to slide number 3 of the earnings presentation for the detailed disclaimer. Now I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Dinesh Agarwal for his opening remarks. Thank you very much, you, sir. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to India Mart's FY24 earnings webinar. We have circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our website as well as on the stock exchange website. I am sure you would have gone through the presentation, and I will be more than happy to take any questions afterwards. I am pleased to report that India Mart has delivered a consolidated collection from customers of Rs. 484 crore rupees in quarter 4 and Rs. 1474 crore rupees in the full year, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 16% and 21% respectively. Deferred revenue grew by 24% to Rs. 1440 crores on consolidated indices. Consolidated revenue from operations has grown by 17% to rupees 315 crores for the quarter fourth and 21% to rupees 1197 crores for the full year. Unique business inquiries have also shown some good growth this year from 24 million representing a Y on Y growth of about 14%. Total paying suppliers have grown to 214,000. The net paying supplier addition was slightly improved from about 1,800 suppliers last quarter to 2,700 suppliers in this quarter. As we have been communicating since the last two quarters, we continue to see more than anticipated churn on first-year silver customers. While our platinum and gold customers, which constitute approximately 50% of our customer base and 75% of revenue, continue to have very, very low churn and continue to grow healthily in terms of ARPU as well as numbers both. As soon as we see improvement in the churn on the silver customers, we would come back with a better guidance on net addition per quarter. As we continue to strengthen our organization and leadership, we are set to welcome Mr. Jitin Divan, who would be joining us as a CFO designate from May of 15th and would take over the role of CFO from June of 15th. Mr. Prateek Chandra, who has been with us uh, as a Chief Financial Officer for almost nine years now, would move on to become the Chief Strategy Officer and focus more on inorganic growth, including exploration of mutual synergies between India Mart and its investing companies. Now, I will hand over the call to Brijesh to update about Busy Infotech. Thank you, and over to you, Brijesh. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, Dizzy has uh, done a net billing of 18.1 crore in Q4 uh, and 69.7 crores in the full year. This represents a year-on-year -year growth of 29% and 45% respectively. The revenue from operations uh, grew by 24% year-on-year to 14.4 crores uh, in Q4 and uh, it grew by 23% uh, to 53.3 crores for the entire year. The deferred revenue has uh, grown by 59% to 43.5 crores. Vidhi uh, has also generated positive cash flows uh, from operations of 6.1 crores during the quarter and uh, 24 crores for the full year. Uh, during the quarter, uh, we also sold 9.5k uh, new licenses taking the total count of licenses sold to 3,64,000. Uh, the new licenses sold during the entire year uh, 
are approximately 33,000. The overall performance has been uh, in line with our expectations and uh, we are uh, focused on maintaining our uh, growth rate in the coming year as well. Uh, with this, I hand over the call to Satik so that he can discuss about the financial performance. Good evening, everyone. I will take you through the financial performance for the quarter and the fiscal year ending March 2024. Consolidated collection from customers was rupees 484 crores in the fourth quarter and rupees 1474 crores on a full year basis representing a year-on-year -year growth of 16% and 21% respectively. India Mart standalone collection from customers for the quarter were at rupees 465 crores and for the full year were at rupees 1399 crores, registering year-on-year -year growth of 16% and 20% respectively. The standalone revenue from operations stood at 299 crore for the quarter and rupees 1139 crore for the full year, registering year-on-year -year growth of 17% and 21% respectively. Our growth in revenue was primarily driven by a 6% increase in paying subscription suppliers and in 10% improvement in our pool due to higher monetization. Deferred revenue stood at 1440 crores, an increase of 24% on a YOI basis. A bit of India Mart standalone business stood at rupees 90 crores per quarter and rupees 334 crores for the full year, representing a margin of 30% and 29% respectively. Consolidated EBITDA was at rupees 84 crores for quarter 4 and rupees 331 crores for the full year, representing a margin of 28% for both the periods. Consolidated net profit for the quarter was rupees 100 crores, which included one-time net fair value gain of rupees 29 crores on account of revaluations of few of our investments, primarily Profmart, due to their recently concluded fundraise activity. Consolidated cash generated from operations was rupees 260 crores for quarter four and rupees 559 crores for the full year. Consolidated cash and treasury balance stood at rupees 2340 crores as of March 31st, 2024. Board of directors have also recommended a final dividend of rupees 20 per equity share for fiscal year 2024, subject to approval of the shareholders at the AGM. Thank you very much. We are now ready to take any questions. We will now begin the Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question to the panelists, kindly raise your hand and allow camera and microphone access. Alternatively, you may type your question in the chat menu and we will revert on it. Please restrict to two questions so that we may be able to address questions from all the participants. We will wait for a couple of moments while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Vivekanand from Ambed Capital. Hi Vivekanand, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. This is Vivekanand from Ambed. So my two questions, the first one is on collections. The last two quarters we have been seeing that the standalone collections have been growing at 16% year on year, materially below the trajectory uh, the 20% plus trajectory uh, that Dinesh, you, you keep highlighting. I understand some of this could be due to churn, which may be temporary. But uh, your aspiration was to grow collections at 20 to 30% CAGR. And, and uh, now collections is growing at a materially slower pace. So just wanted to get your thoughts on the extent to which the market is penetrated and are there any other challenges that you see that are perhaps symptomatic of uh, of, uh, of of this uh, issue which uh, which is obviously uh, a very big one for investors the second question is on the uh, margin trajectory we are seeing that the margins are improving uh, cost seem cost seem to be under control not growing at the same pace as before uh, could you help us think through the margins for this uh, for the standalone business uh, over the next two three years and the key levers? 
थैंक यू थैंक यू विवेकानंद यस यू राइटली हाईलाइटेड द लास्ट क्वार्टर अवर कलेक्शन ग्रो बाय सेवेंटीन परसेंट एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वार्टर अवर कलेक्शन फ्रॉम कस्टमर्स ग्रो एट सिक्सटीन परसेंट सो एज यू राइटली हाईलाइटेड दैट द नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स नेट कस्टमर एडिशन हैज नॉट बीन ग्रोइंग फॉर द लास्ट फोर क्वार्टर और सो एंड दैट इज putting a pressure on the uh, collection only for coming from the arpu so if you really see out of the 16% or 17% collection growth that we are getting only 6% is coming from the new customers while most of the other 10% is coming from uh, arpu growth uh, per customer we were hoping that uh, you know we will get another 2 3% uh, increase in the customer base uh, per quarter uh, which is happening uh, last quarter we uh, were add, we added the lowest ever customers at 1800 customers and uh, this quarter uh, we have added 2700 customers i am hopeful that uh, you know slowly and slowly we will improve on uh, net customer addition and uh, my aspiration as you rightly said continues to be 20 to 25% in the collection growth uh, 30% at this uh, juncture uh, on a stand alone basis sounds little difficult but yes on a uh, consolidated basis i continue to have an aspiration for 33% of the collection growth or uh, revenue growth uh, is there anything else uh, nothing materially that i can uh, say uh, one thing that i can probably point out is that uh, we have uh, continuously uh, found ways uh, on the platinum customer to improve the uh, arpus and some of those arpus uh, as we have slowly and slowly as we are in implementing the category based uh, pricing uh, some of those uh, customers are taking little more time Uh, than anticipated uh, to convert to higher value packages so that could be uh, just one but i am not yet uh, able to definitely say that other than the customer churn anything else is uh, doing that on the margin side as you can see two three things have happened one uh, we got our last quarter annual increment affected from the 1st of december instead of 1st of january so some of it is uh, uh, helped by that secondly if you see on the sales and marketing side we have continued to improve uh, quarter and quarter in terms of sales and marketing cost per uh, so while it was uh, uh, it used to be uh, you know 20% in the FY23 it has come down to 18% and in this quarter it is 17% how it has been happening because as i promised you we are going to probably cut down a little bit from tier 4 and non profitable places uh, so that optimization and focusing on uh, more core markets uh, has been able to do this some of it could be productivity gain also the overall cost base which which had grown very very rapidly in the uh, from mid of fy22 to mid of fy23 because we were hiring uh, heavily on the product and technology front also so if you see there is a consistent drop uh, from 19% to 17% as uh, revenue from operation so that is also helping and maybe a very little coming from the general and administration Uh, so general administration is not coming much because uh, uh, most of the uh, juice has already been taken out uh, but as the revenue will continue to grow uh, maybe a few bips every year we will get from there so from that perspective i can assure you that uh, we are now feeling lot more confident of 30% plus margin and uh, maybe we will improve by 1% every year Uh, going forward from here 
Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dinesh, for the very elaborate answers. Uh, just pressing a bit further on the collections point, uh, how, how confident are you to resolve this issue uh, with respect to churn? Because this is the third quarter that churn seems to be uh, cited as a key issue and uh, you don't yet seem to have the answers to resolve the elevated levels of churn. And uh, if I may also add, uh, could you uh, could you help us understand the churn levels in percentage terms uh, across the key customer buckets? Thank you. So as I said, uh, in the platinum customer, our churn are like a half a percent per per month, uh, or six to seven percent, eight percent per annum on a gold. Uh, uh, we continue to have 12 to 14% or uh, 1% uh, per month or 12 to 14% per annum. On the silver side, uh, on a silver monthly, we are like 7% to 8% per month. And on the uh, silver annual, we are running at uh, about 40% uh, per annum. So these are the uh, churn metrics that I uh, repeated last time also. Uh, very little improvement, even if, it, if even if we get one uh, percent uh, per month improvement uh, uh, in the daily monthly or the or the silver monthly, what we call internally uh, and silver annual. I think we would be suddenly looking at a, uh, double the net customer addition from here on. So um, I hope that uh, over the next. Uh, quarter or so, I should be able to give you some positive results. But that's the only thing I can say for now. Sure. Thank you and all the best. Thanks, Vivekanand. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Novama. Hi, Nikhil. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Dinesh, uh, 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 sir, uh, my first question uh, is on the collection side again. Uh, just want to understand last time when we discussed uh, the, uh, the commentary by you was that collection we, uh, will go back to 20% plus in coming quarters and given the collection uh, slow down further. So while uh, supplier addition part uh, was part of the expectation, I believe, so was there some dis disappointment uh, even on our side and that's what led to collection uh, where they are? Also, while uh, ambition is to uh, uh, get back collection to R25 plus or 30% growth, any guidelines uh, for FI25 for coming quarters uh, given supply addition uh, continue to remain lower? I, I would continue to uh, hope for a 20% plus collection. Uh, no, Pratik is uh, telling me to say, say uh, Holi was in the last week in the March. Uh, I don't want to take that uh, uh, take that uh, phase behind the shield. Uh, but you know, all said and done, I think 20% uh, collection is uh, doable. Uh, we should have done that. Uh, purely and purely uh, could be one day here and there miss, but. Uh, 20% collection is doable and I am confident and I continue to be confident uh, that uh, we will deliver a 20% uh, collection growth uh, coming quarter and coming many quarters. Sure, sir. Uh, there is uh, further improvement uh, in other uh, few KPIs, uh, especially registered buyer increase further. Last time you mentioned that you know it could have increased due to some uh, scrapping or something, uh, or web web crawling or something. But uh, is this improvement is uh, now a sustainable trend or organic trend? And do you think uh, 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 this will lead to improvement even in you know uh, purchasing or uh, unique business inquiry increasing? Because uh, while the unique business inquiry increased 14% YY from a lower base, it's at a similar level what we were seeing in quarter two. 
So from that level, we haven't seen a material improvement in business inquiry. So uh, is the registered buyer can be seen as early indicator there? I think you should always focus on uh, unique business inquiries. And unique business inquiry number has grown uh, handsomely uh, by 14% uh, this quarter also and 14% last quarter also. Uh, so effectively, if you see FY22 and FY21 were both COVID years. And during the COVID, we have gone through a lot of, uh, you know, shortage and a lot of uh, medical devices and uh, medical related items, food and food related items. Now that world has gone back to uh, physical world, you know, we hardly saw a very little drop in uh, unique business inquiry in FY23 and FY24. Uh, we are almost back at uh, FY21 and 22 numbers. So effectively, uh, uh, now we are consistently doing uh, 23, 24 million uh, per quarter. So I'm uh, confident that uh, next next year we will comfortably be uh, looking at 100 million uh, plus unique business inquiry. Uh, so I, uh, I I don't get uh, where are you saying that 14% was last quarter also and this quarter also. Uh, in in terms of the registered buyers, as I said. A lot of lot of scraping nowadays is very common for uh, very uh, very popular websites, and uh, people also come and uh, try and see if this particular uh, number or this particular email or has a account on India Mart or account on Facebook or account on uh, Amazon or account on Zomato. Uh, uh, so there are a lot of these advertising companies are also trying to collect this kind of data from different uh, mechanisms. So that is why I don't rely too much on the uh, registered buyer numbers or the traffic numbers, uh, more so on the unique business inquiries numbers. Sure, sir. Understood. Sir, last one on margin. Margins uh, were very strong, sir, uh, similar to last quarter, uh, even though you highlighted that uh, wage hike started uh, from December this time, still uh, on Q and Q basis, uh, the margins were uh, more or less flattish, right, despite of two month of uh, wage hike in quarter four. And clearly, sales and marketing is the one part where uh, uh, there was hardly any improvement on Q and Q basis, despite uh, general trend, what we have seen in previous years, that uh, you pay large bonuses. Is it fair to assume that, uh, you know, the benefit is largely due to lower bonus payment? No, sir. Uh, so if you will see the uh, customer service cost, uh, the most of the bonuses will go into the customer service because they come for renewal and upsell. Uh, the on the sales and marketing, uh, if you see on quarter on quarter, this is the new customer acquisition uh, engine. Uh, most of the uh, bonus will be and, and bonus this particular year also. I if I remember correctly was higher by 40% from the previous year same quarter. Uh, so uh, I don't know which. Which so number you are referring to? So, sir, understood. The only point, uh, last one I have, is regarding uh, uh, the employee addition, which was about 200. Just wanted to confirm is uh, this addition was for the full quarter or th this 200 addition was during the end of quarter, just from cost uh, perspective? I don't have that detail. I don't have that detail. Sure, sir. Thank you. Good luck for coming period. Thanks, Nikhil. Next question is from the line of Swapnil from GM Financials. Hi, Swapnil. Please go ahead with your question. Hey, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, I wanted to understand on the, uh, the uh, breakup of the collections growth, uh, which is around 16%. So what I understand, obviously, it is uh, it includes the paying supplier base and then the ARPUs, but there is also a third element, which is basically your uh, the average tenure uh, or the uh, or, or customers are taking a longer period uh, tenure instead of a one year or a monthly plan. 
So that also uh, supports collections growth, if I'm not wrong. So just wanted to understand. So uh, if I were to uh, break it down, uh, what would be the collections growth attributable to because some of the customers would have taken longer tenure plans within that 16%. Thank you, Swapnil. Uh, I don't have that particular number uh, handy. Uh, not much of a material change because uh, on the multi-year customer mix, uh, so annual and monthly mix, uh, annual has definitely increased by 4-5% because monthly customers we have uh, tried to discontinue from tier 4 uh, down. But you want to add something? Yeah, so, so, so just to clarify, uh, I think when you're looking at ARPU, uh, that is essentially the the revenue numbers, which is a, a result of the collections done uh, in the previous quarters. Because, you know, 80% of the revenues is coming in from the uh, opening balance of deferred revenues of that particular quarter. Right? So, when we look at collection for the quarter, uh, you know, deferred the 6% revenue. is, uh, like you say, the customer group. And you can say roughly around 10% is uh, an ad for growth or uh, collection per uh, customer growth. So most of this growth uh, is largely from the uh, the uh, gold and platinum customers. No, but he's asking annual versus multi-year. Has there been a change in the mix? No, no. The, 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 the mix has been uh, pretty similar. It's just that total customers account of the annual uh, and multi-year has grown. Gold and platinum customers count has grown. Yes, that's the only thing. Okay. So not a material change there. And that's okay. also uh, visible in your uh, deferred revenue schedule. So if you re really see deferred revenue schedule, uh, the current and non-current portion haven't changed uh, materially. Okay, I take your point, but uh, if I were to just understand it a bit more, uh, so typically collections growth, uh, collections mainly is com uh, comes from the uh, the renewals or people in the gold and platinum uh, tiers, right? Because uh, silver uh, inherently contributes very uh, less uh, to the collections, yeah. uh, you know, right? Uh, and my sense is like the 80% of the uh, uh, collections comes from the uh, the premium categories versus around 20, 15 to 20 percent from silver. So yes. why would a churn? So my question is, why would a churn in sil uh, silver category impact your collections growth? I mean, if if it contributes just 15 to 20 percent mm. to your collections, why is your collections growth slowing down then? Yeah, you are a very right question, and that should have slowed down only by one or two percent, not by four or five percent. You are right. So that four or five percent, because what happens is if there is a continuous, uh, continuous low growth in the customer base, we our ability to upsell from the silver to gold to platinum also gets limited. So the collection growth, while you are right, it comes from gold and platinum uh, majorly, but uh, it's been four quarters or, or three full quarters where we have not been able to grow. Uh, customer base significantly. Every every time we add five, six, seven thousand customers, we also add a pipeline to gold and platinum, uh, which will give you a nine months later or a six months later. Uh, the same customer will go to the gold or platinum and give you one lakh rupees there. So since this, uh, and I explained this earlier also when when this started happening, that. Uh, if the net customer addition is one quarter here or there, uh, I am not bothered about uh, long-term growth opportunities. But if the uh, customer addition uh, for four or five quarters is going to be affected, then it will start to show up in uh, collection first. Collection last quarter was 17% growth and revenue uh, was still growing at 21%. This quarter, if you see, Collection growth has also come down to 16% and revenue growth has also come down to 17%. So if you take our business, uh, customer growth followed by uh, deferred revenue growth, followed by uh, um, followed by collection growth, followed by deferred revenue growth, and followed by uh, uh, revenue growth. So they all will uh, show up uh, one, one or 
two quarter after the uh, thing. So if if something goes wrong for a uh, for a continued larger long period of time, it's more like a uh, hundred day moving average. So uh, if uh, if number of customers for 365 days have not been adding up to the expectation, the collection will start to slow down. If the collection will start to slow down, uh, a deferred revenue would start to slow down. And if deferred revenue would start to slow down, uh, the revenue would start to slow down. Uh, so that's what we are seeing. And I am hoping that customer growth would take a U-turn from here on. And over the next two, three quarters, uh, it should uh, come back uh, to our five, six thousand uh, normal customer growth. Okay. Uh, and uh, one more question uh, with respect to the churn itself. Now, you, in the opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, the churn is happening uh, mainly in the first year silver, category, uh, silver monthly customers, right? Uh, and I'm presuming uh, uh, they would be onboarded at a average relation of around 2.5 thousand, which was the norm uh, prior to the May hike that we took. Uh, so, if we are not able to retain uh, these uh, customers who were um, there at a two point, you know, at 2.5k per month, and now we have taken a 20% uh, hike uh, in May, what is the confidence level of you? Uh, you have uh, to keep on uh, adding customers at five, five, six thousand that you just mentioned, because uh, I would presume the customers who are on a lower uh, realization, they would be. Uh, uh, you can retain them far easier than someone who is on a uh, you know 20% higher realization. And so we are one, seeing the challenge in the load here. Yeah. Uh, one, I think our price was 3,000 plus tax uh, just pre-COVID. We brought it down to uh, uh, 2,500 uh, during the COVID because the COVID, we wanted to support the uh, thing. Uh, the churn did not go out of hand uh, in the May, uh, in the uh, uh, until March uh, 2023. Uh, and, and you may be completely right that uh, you know is this 500 rupees uh, that is causing this churn to happen? Uh, while all our understanding uh, is that. It is purely and purely affordability uh, item. It has nothing to do with a uh, conversion item or uh, stickiness item. Uh, people who want to try, um, at that point of time, it does matter. So our gross additions should suffer, and they did suffer. But on a trial basis, if somebody tries it for a month or two or three, uh, either he will get enough value that it will be more than enough for uh, for a 2500 or a 3000 rupee even for a 5000 rupee uh, customer it is the entry level which is uh, more problematic uh, post 3 to 6000 there are very few customers who want to continue on a, a monthly basis they would either move to a trust or move to a maximizer or move to a star supplier uh, within a uh, year or 18 months of time frame. Uh, there are very few, few customers who stay for second year or a third year on a uh, silver monthly customer. In the silver annual, yes, you can say that uh, almost 50% of the customers will continue even in the second year as a silver annual, but not in silver monthly. Uh, but uh, just but what is then what is the confidence that we we would be able to do five to six thousand additions that you just mentioned uh, uh, next year uh, given that this issue may persist uh, right uh, next year as well as i said you know i've been trying uh, i can only say i'm trying okay so reducing the price won't help that much i can say okay got it uh, thanks for the opportunity and all the best Thanks, Swapnil. Next question is from the line of Samarth Patel from Equilus Securities. Hi, Samarth. Please go ahead with your question. Okay. 
Okay, we could not connect with Samad Patel. We'll take question from Mr. Anirudh Shetty from Solidarity Advisors. Hi, Anirudh. Please go ahead with your question. Anirudh, please unmute yourself. Yes. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions from my side. Um, so just one question is, you know, uh, as we aspire to grow collections at 20% plus, is it fair to assume that um, the buyer, unique buyer inquiries also must grow at a similar pace? Because Finally, um, it's the buyer inquiries that feeds our customer grow, addition growth or ARPU increase over time. Um, and if that's true, then um, uh, do you think that the you know the business inquiry growth that we're looking to achieve, which is say 93 million going to 100 million, um, would that be sufficient to kind of drive that growth? So just wanted to understand uh, how are we thinking about long term you know business inquiry growth to kind of achieve our aspirational collection growth? Yeah. So, uh, if you see uh, our traffic uh, and active buyers and unique business inquiries over a long period of time uh, have grown at a 20% CAGR growth rate, while our paying suppliers have grown at 15% CAGR rate. So, we still have uh, sufficient enough uh, margin and this is on a CAGR level to monetize customers uh, better by doing a better matchmaking. So I don't think it's the number of uh, buyers. Yes, it, number of buyers would help, and uh, uh, but will will that uh, is that a limiting factor for us uh, over the next few quarters or few years? No. So over a longer period of time, uh, even if my business, unique business inquiries grow by uh, 15%, I think we should continue to grow by 20% in terms of the uh, collection growth. Uh, for now, uh, even if we are growing at 10%, uh, because we had a uh, excellent jump from uh, FY20 to FY23 uh, at 30 odd percent, I think we are fine there. Mm. It is not because of the less number of buyers that we are uh, reducing. Yeah, it is the, because of the kind of buyers that a supplier is looking for or the location in which a supplier is looking for. That is not happening. And most of the time, we are still finding the supplier's uh, own uh, ability to understand and uh, put enough time and uh, energy on the platform. Uh, to be able to convert those leads. Uh, so they say that uh, you have enough leads, uh, but we could not convert them because uh, the buyer was asking for too much of a discount, or we did not do enough follow-up. So those are the uh, uh, those are the one of the important pieces of uh, churn. Uh, but yes, uh, more buyers would definitely help. And, uh, and we continue to find ways uh, to serve the buyer better so that we can have more repeat buyers because in terms of the total registered buyers or in terms of the uh, last 12 month active buyers, we are already reaching almost 40 million uh, active buyers. Looking at the B2B market size, I don't think, uh, I mean, we might be already 40% uh, penetrated uh, in terms of the buyer side base. Uh, I'm, I'm, I just keep assuming that there would be 100 million B2B buyers uh, in India, uh, whom we can attract uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, how many of them we can attract uh, uh, on quarterly basis, on monthly basis? That is the uh, more uh, important piece for us. Hope that answers. 
look, uh, very helpful. And um, if say if the market is 100 million, we are at 40. Do you think at some point advertisement could help to attract more buyers? And um, from a frequency of transaction perspective, just getting them to do more, uh, uh, transact more on your platform. What are the levers that we have available there? Yeah, so when 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 we get a little bit uh, handle on churn, I think we will um, try and uh, address the buyer churn also. First, let us get some 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 comfort on the supplier churn, and then we'll uh, come to the buyer churn also. Um, so my next question is on uh, the gross profit margin. You know, the last couple of years, uh, gross profit margin seems to have come down. Um, just want to understand uh, the reasons and, you know, going forward, where do you think the gross profit margin could settle? So pre-COVID, it was 72%. Now we are 73%. Uh, I mean, FY21, 22, 23 were anyway... Uh, different years and then we uh, got back uh, all the investment in place so I think we are doing fine and we'll continue to uh, probably improve by 1-1% from here on. So we should see an improvement in uh, when you say EBITDA margin can improve by 1% that's um, is that primarily going to come from gross profit margin improvement or we could see uh, I, I think it will come more from the uh, from the bottom uh, less from the uh, gross profit margin. Gross profit margin might might improve by half a percent or so, but uh, uh, sales and marketing and technology and content, uh, I, I believe we will uh, we should be able to. I mean, it's a combination of all of them, but not on a quarterly basis, but on a yearly basis when we will draw the trend, uh, we will know. But I I'm more confident that we should be able to do more than one percent for sure. Got it. Got it. Thank, thank you for taking my questions. That's it. Thanks, Anirudh. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Banerjee from ICSI Securities. Hi, Abhishek. Please go ahead with your question. Abhishek, we can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, Abhishek. So, uh, so sorry, so sorry. No, uh, just uh, trying to understand on the manpower cost bit, right? Uh, the the net additions have been low for almost uh, the last four quarters. Uh, so, uh, by now, we would think that uh, man manpower should have come off a little bit in terms of uh, additions. So, what is your outlook going ahead? And also, this quarter, I saw that the outsourced sales cost has actually declined on a sequential basis, uh, right? So is that indicative of a strategic call to, you know, not outsource as much anymore? Because uh, some of the churn was also uh, uh, due to this. So, uh, Abhishek, I repeat here. So if you, uh, you know, recollect in the last quarterly form, we communicated that, uh, you know, uh, from a sales outsourcing standpoint, there were two kinds of outsourcing. One, uh, you know, we had uh, a channel partners arrangement and roughly around 50% of these sales were coming okay. in out of that, 40% of these sales were coming in out of that arrangement. So that continues to be as it is. We continue to, you know, build on that piece. The second uh, kind of an outsourcing was, uh, you know, where we have outsourced sales uh, and uh, it was more uh, the temp staffing, the temp staffing uh, to the kind of the companies like GI spectrum, team these kind of companies. Uh, that part is what we were looking at, you know, building uh, the sales team in house and reducing dependence on, uh, you know, those kind of uh, outsourcing stuff. So, uh, so that was a movement that we planned for the teams uh, in that is supposed to be done 
in two to three quarters time frame. So half of that movement has happened. So that's why you see a reduction in the outsource sales cost, you know, to that extent, and uh, that cost would have got added to the uh, manpower cost. Other than that, it has been uh, the normal increments and the head count increases and the other functions if there is. And that is why you are not seeing the manpower cost coming uh, declining because some of the outsource sales costs have shifted to the manpower. Understood. Understood. So, also with regards to the additions, right, net additions, uh, given that from Q1 FY24 is when you had the problem of churn, and if I think that, so by this time, probably uh, most of the people who were on the verge would have churned out, right? So, that kind of implies that Q1 FY25, the churn numbers should come down uh, pretty sharply. Uh, is there something that I'm missing in this analysis? No. <clears throat> Sorry, Abhishek, we could not understand uh, the, no. the so, of one year that you, you're drawing first. No, so I'm saying, see, uh, these people, uh, the people who were churning out were mostly silver monthly and uh, silver uh, uh, yearly customers, right? So I would imagine that the people who were churning out, uh, I mean, the less valuable customers would have churned out within a year's time frame, right? Because uh, they all their uh, uh, subscriptions would have expired. So from Q1 FI25, we should not see the same problem uh, in, in, I mean, no, that is what it is. That's just a cyclical. Yeah. So Abhishek, this is like, let's say the, uh, Customer acquisition and the churn is like it's a monthly progress, right? It happens every day. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it will continue to be a cyclical issue. The only thing what we saw in the last year was that, uh, you know, since we started acquiring customers a year before, uh, the proportion of the first year customer to the overall customer base, you know, was uh, slightly higher. And because of which, since in the first year customers there was a higher churn, uh, you know, you were uh, seeing that kind of, you know, churn. So, uh, only uh, as a proportion, uh, if that mix improves, that benefit would certainly be visible. However, the churn rate, if I compare it on like-to-like -like basis, on the silver customers, specifically the, uh, the first-year customers, whether on a monthly or on an annual basis, that continues to stay at the elevated levels, as we said. No, that I understand, but... Just now, you also spoke about the first-year customers, right? So, obviously, if the net additions have been on the lower side in the last one year... Yes, you are right. You are right. So, if, if the net additions are lower, uh, the first-year uh, churn should come down uh, on, a, on a yearly basis because the net addition itself is lower. Right. So, that, that, that should help us uh, 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 by some margin, yeah. Great. So, also, if I were to try and understand the strategy for monetizing the other part of the supplier base who are not paying anything right now, and I know, I mean, this is obviously much easier said than done, uh, but but is there something that you're working on? Because, see, on one hand, I completely understand the value-added offerings that you are giving for your platinum customers, I mean, for people to be moving to the higher end of the spectrum, right? But at the same time, there is obviously need for a platform to be a place for, you know, just converted businesses, I mean, largely offline businesses to just come online and exist, right? Or to create a foothold on the online uh, uh, online part. Uh, so, what is the strategy? Is there any way that some kind of monetization can be worked out here? I mean, we tried in the past uh, by way of Ratun or things like that. Or, I mean, you are you are saying that is there a value in charging a lifetime free uh, or or at a very low cost uh, with no ROI free uh, free listing on a, in a directory? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, monetizing something. Uh, thousand rupees a year. Uh, the cost of sales is too high. You know, the cost of sales is too high. But it's a good idea. We will we will try once again to see if there is something that we could 
sell for thousand rupees a year. Perfect. And and uh, in terms of the overall, uh, uh, you know, consolidated performance, uh, I was uh, a little surprised to see that uh, uh, busy uh, on a yearly basis has not uh, really, you know, uh, outperformed on the profitability part. Uh, anything that you would like to call out there, uh, and and if there are any uh, corrective actions that are being you know put in place. I I, I don't think we should look at the uh, profitability of busy. My my continuous recommendation to busy is uh, to have a zero beta and uh, invest uh, all the money that they can generate uh, into growth. Uh, so I'm not uh, even looking at one 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 crore rupees quarterly beta. Uh, as being something substantial. Uh, my only advice is that uh, don't go into negative, uh, but uh, don't try and chase two three crore rupees a bit every quarter, uh, or, or two three um, crore rupees of a bit every year. So uh, and the other thing I said there is, if you see uh, our deferred revenues yeah. have grown by fifty nine percent. Uh, the net billing has grown by 44%. Uh, so what you see is that uh, there is money that has been collected from the customer which is yet to be recognized. So when you see the accounting EBITDA, uh, accounting EBITDA will be on a uh, lower recognized revenue. Uh, whereas all the costs of manpower marketing that we've invested in, that is already budgeted in and that is why you see uh, lower EBITDA there. But when you look at it on a, uh, let's say, cash-to-cash basis, uh, the margins still are healthy. Understood. Understood. So, also, uh, you have uh, you very kindly shared a sheet on uh, your uh, 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 KPEX expenditures and all. There I uh, saw uh, uh, some strategic investments which were done in this year to the tune of around, I think, 25 crores. Yes. So, uh, what, what was this, uh, if you could give us some clarity? So these have been the, the follow-on investments that we've been making in our uh, you know, investing companies. This is uh, the yearly number of uh, 25 crores of So I can give you, in fact, the entity-wide breakups, uh, you know, maybe uh, later on. Got it. No, no, that, that's fine. I was just un- trying to understand if, if something fresh you have done or not. Okay, the, this is very helpful, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Abhishek. Next question is from the line of Sarang Sandil from RW Investment Advisors. Hi, Sarang. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Hi. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, sir, was there any depreciation amortization item that has materially impacted uh, this quarter? And should we expect this run rate to continue? Uh, because we saw quite a jump this quarter. Yes, sir. So in this particular quarter, uh, other than the uh, the uh, regular depreciation, uh, there is an uh, you know one-time uh, impairment charge on uh, uh, right of use of land that we had. Uh, you know, during the quarter, this is a land. It is there uh, in uh, sector 75 Noida. And uh, during the quarter, we received a cancellation notice uh, from the authorities. And uh, while uh, there is a provision to file an appeal against that particular order, and we have already filed that appeal, that appeal is, uh, you know, pending uh, review in front of the appropriate authorities. Uh, But out of a conservative basis, we have taken that impairment provision. Once the outcome of the appeal is more clear, at that point of time, uh, we will revisit this provision. So this is to the extent of three and a half crores. Okay. okay, so we can expect about six to seven crores run rate. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so secondly, um, <clears throat> though in the previous call you had mentioned that uh, moving outsource salespeople to permanent payroll of the company does not help us on the cost side. Uh, just want to double check that this strategy has not really aided our margin expansion this quarter. Yeah, the only on, only thing is that uh, 
as you bring them in uh, from a from a temp staffing payroll to a, a company payroll while uh, most of the benefits are same uh, people do value a large company payroll uh, thing and uh, hope that results into uh, some percentage point reduction in the attrition or, or retention which further helps us improve the uh, productivity that helps us improve the uh, sales and marketing cost sure so there is no training cost per se when they migrate to permanent payroll well, right i mean that would be immaterial to make any difference on the uh, but i think uh, the attrition has a two edged sword uh, one it will it, it gives you a cost of hiring cost of training and the other it uh, gets you a productivity uh, dent both so in case we are able to save uh, a few percentage points on attrition uh, by moving uh, people from Uh, outsource to insource uh, in house that should generally help us save some cost and save uh, give some better productivity so 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 in the medium to long term it's, it's a leave of some margin okay thank you so much and the uh, best of luck thanks sir Next question is from the line of Jasdeep Palia from Clockwise Capital. Hi Jasdeep, please go ahead with your question. Sir, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Uh, sir, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, what is the growth in the number of gold and platinum customers for uh, FY24 and uh, 4224? So, gold and platinum customers uh, are now at about 49 percent of the total customer base. which was about 47% at the beginning of the year okay at the beginning of the year we were uh, 200 uh, 6000 customers right mhm 203 203000 customers and uh, 47.5% of that was gold and platinum now we are uh 49% to be precise uh so what was the number at the beginning of the year 46.9 no 40 uh, 47.5 now okay. it is 49 got it and so what is the growth in revenue of gold and platinum customers for the year i i always say uh, that approximate number i have given you that now it is close to uh, 75% but it is still not exactly 75% uh i think you can give the exact number of uh, uh, what is the this 75% ka exact kya 73% 73% is the current exact number uh, of the revenue uh, i won't be able to give you last year number but last year then top 10% ka arpu if you see last test top 10% arpu in the fy23 was 2 lakh 14000 rupees for the fy24 it is 2 lakh 47000 rupees which is very similar to platinum arpu got it sir and sir the, is there any change in the churn metric for gold uh, gold and platinum customers or they remain so nothing on the platinum side the platinum is about uh, 12% of our customer base or so uh, keep varying because the bottom uh, because of the Uh, denominator uh, on the gold side as i about 40% or 35% of our customer base that's where uh, because the numbers have gone uh, quickly uh, high from uh, 45% of uh, 150000 to now 49% or 50% or so 
So there we have seen a big number. So there might be 1% uh, uh, churn uh, reduction from 10-11% uh, to 12-13%, but that's about it. Yeah. You know, just to clarify, the churn uh, actually is dependent also on the vintage of the customers and the evolutions of the customers. So, so they may like it's you know vary because of uh, you know these factors. However, on a like to like basis, there is no change as such in the gold and the platinum uh, customer churns. They are they are by and large stable and by and large growing and by and large paying more more money. Got it, sir. Thank you. That's all for my side. Thanks, Justy. Thank you very much, everyone.